Hi Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your September 2021 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bull sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Scorpio be affected by the September 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have strength, which is Leo energy. If we have Leo within our natal chart, that's going to be coming through quite powerfully at our root. And we have death, Scorpio, which is us. So we're represented by the death card in the major arcana, by the cups in the minor arcana. So there's strength as we embrace who we are and we embrace the transformation that not only this moon is giving us, but that life and life experience is giving us. It moves us then to our inner self and we have the ace of fire, fire sign energy, right, coming through. And there's a sense of God, source, spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing us a gift of passion, of determination, of focus, of insight, and of, of creativity. And then brings us to the two of water, the two of cups. And that's just absolutely beautiful. We then have the king of swords, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This links us very profoundly with the new moon on the 6th of October in Libra. And then we have the chariot coming through, which is Cancer energy, if we have cancer within our natal chart, that's going to be coming through very powerfully at our heart. Just as if we have air sign energy within our natal chart, that's going to be coming through very powerfully at our heart as well. It moves us then into the public arena. We have the fool, it's saying take that leap. And we have the five of pentacles. And this is the poverty mentality. Emo emotional withdrawal is what it says at the bottom, but it's a sense of I'm not worthy. You know, I don't get to have this prosperity, this success, this prestige. So there is, is something here. It's like start the new journey, go for it. And then we're going to be like, oh, wait, 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 let's rewind this. Let's, let's pull it all back. Let's, let's not. So that's going to be something that we face during this moon. And that's going to be something that's very powerful for us. The sense of how do I move forward? How do I embrace what I want? How do I get to where it is that I myself want to be. And it leads us to the full moon in Pisces on the 20th of September. And Pisces, here it says, balance the spiritual with the practical. Pisces is ruled by Neptune and Neptune brings us 
into this beautiful sense of spirituality, into seeing all beauty through a spiritual lens, all beauty through a grounding of our earth and of what we desire in life and of, you know, how we move forward in connectivity. It also holds sway over our dreams. So there's going to be this, this power to our dreams, but there's also going to be a lot of the trauma and the drama that we're experiencing in life or the blessings and the beauty that we're experiencing in life played out through our dreams. So do be mindful of that. This can also make us want to slip away and forget about all our troubles. So Neptune can also have that power over us to say, you know what, this is a bit hard, I don't wanna do this anymore. And it can lead us to addictions. If we have addictions in our past, we have to be mindful of that, or just any coping mechanisms that we've developed from when we were really small that aren't the best coping mechanisms. But we're going to find that we want to kind of disconnect from any trauma, any drama, any anything that troubles us during this time. And this is going to be a time where actually, if we face what troubles us, we're going to have really beautiful insights, really beautiful ideas into how to move forward and how to claim our own sacred space. Now, this is also going to be where our spirituality and our compassion is the highest. But this is also going to lead to us having a very, very thin boundaries, like not a good sense of boundaries and saying no to things and yes to other things. So do be mindful of that. Make sure you set up really good boundaries and also make sure that you cleanse away negative energy. Just visualize a energy cleansing or a grounding, you know, go outside, stand in in the grass or walk around with barefoot shoes and just ground yourself to the earth. That's going to be so important. Now the full moon always brings our family, friends and close relationships into focus. And what it also does is with the sun opposing the moon, opposite the moon, we're going to find that opposing forces during this time are what come up. So we're going to be really focused on those that are emotionally the most important to us. And we're also going to be looking at maybe how their energy clashes with our energy or, you know, what they want and what we want and how everything isn't aligning perfectly. We have to let go of the perfect during this time because that's going to be really beneficial. And we have to step into the fact that sometimes opposites make things beautiful. Sometimes, you know, it is through the the oddest putting together of things, you know, the oddest coming together that the beauty is found. This also is when we have the full moon, this is when our intuition and our emotional awareness is just through the roof. So do be mindful of that. Now, Mercury is going to be trying Jupiter, which is absolutely amazing. It brings us optimism, generosity, good luck, and good news. Our instincts are on point during this time. We absolutely can kind of like see what we want, see what we need to do to, to get it. And this is going to be a time where we clearly see what we need to form our future, what we need to get forward. This is also a fantastic time for networking and socializing or setting up new ideas, setting up new paths forward. Mercury is going to be squared Pluto, which is going to bring a little bit of a difficult energy, <coughs> excuse me, which contradicts the beautiful energy of Mercury trying Jupiter. With Mercury squared Pluto, this is actually a time where we're really deep thinkers, where we want to be really intense and have intense meaning, intense conversations, intense everything during this time, which sounds great, but we could also dive too deeply. This is going to be a great time for work. This is going to be a great time for research. This is going to be a great time for planning out and creating, but we dive too deep and we have to be mindful of that. We have to be mindful of pulling ourselves back when need be. We have to be mindful of saying, you know what? I don't need to know about that. That's messing up my energy. <laughs> and why I say this is, and Spears is showing me this one time where I got really into true crime. I, I don't know why. And I just dove too deep into these videos on YouTube. And I had to step back because I could feel it fracturing me. I could feel like the evil of, of people and like things that they had decided to do to other human beings or to other beings in and of themselves, just fracturing me. And we have to, we have to be aware of that where even if we find it entertaining for some reason, or we're curious about it for one reason or the other, if we dive too deeply into certain things and we're going to be drawn to the really intense things during this time, it can fracture us. And we need to step back and say, you know what? No, I matter. And my energy vibration being in alignment with me matters. So be mindful of the rabbit hole. This then leads us to Jupiter, Jupiter being semi-sextile Pluto, which helps soften up the energy of Mercury squared Pluto and aligns us with the successful energy of Mercury trying Jupiter. This brings our spirituality and personal growth into the forefront of what we want during this time and our ability to create wealth and 
professional advancement really comes into play. It's like, wow, I can see the way that I want to succeed, the way I want to achieve, the way I want to to build what is needed within my life. It leads us then to the new moon in Libra, which I will be doing a video on itself to, to show how it interacts with us, Scorpio. And this says here, a new romantic cycle begins. And we're going to have this new sense of beauty, especially opening up here at our hearts during this time, this new sense of beauty, this new sense of falling in love with life, this new door opening, which we can see really impacts us in the public arena with the fool. It moves us to the full moon in Aries, and it says a fiery climax approaches. There's something that's coming to a head. There's an intensity that's coming forward, and it brings us to this passion, to this fire, to this power, to this insight, to these ideas. And it's like what has been building up in us on the 20th of October when we have the hunter's full moon, the full moon in Aries brings us this sense of determination, this sense of focus, very much in line with the, hunter, with the hunter, because it's really interesting because this full moon on the 20th of September is the harvest moon. So when you're harvesting, you and the crops all needed to come in, back in ancient times, you would, you would call the hunters and everybody would have to come and they would have to hunt. They would have to harvest. And then we have the hunter's moon. We have the time where it's time to gather the game, when it's, it's time to provide the protein and the fat and the nourishment for the body that isn't isn't purely gotten out of growing from the earth though one could argue that that meat comes from the earth as well so here we then have strength strength leads us forward strength is going to be quite different during this time we can feel like we're looking into a a greater expanse a better sense of, of power and insight and ideas and and desires and this is going to be a time for us where it's like okay how do i move me forward like okay how do i get to where it is that i want to be or what it is that i desire and what it is that's so powerful and intense and and purposeful for me but it can feel like we're standing there alone we can feel like this is is more than i bargained for at times and that's kind of the mercury squared pluto coming into play where we're seeking out that which was that which is intense and that which is hard to find or hard to pin down so strength we're going to start to realize isn't us you know having having a battle with anybody or having the biggest muscles or you know driving the the fanciest cars or however it is our society dictates strength strength is going to come from within and strength is going to come from the gentleness of heart from the walking softly upon the earth from the kindness of individuality and insight and ideas and it leads us then to ourselves this strength and this realizing that we're stronger than we realized and we're more powerful than we thought brings us to a place of intensity focus and determination it brings us into a place of death and that sounds rather morbid but the death card is beautiful because it's the dying away of the old self the rebirth of the new it's the transformation of dreams and it's the amalgamation of all our experiences coming together to say i'm not who i once was and as i embrace who i am today i see that change i see that power within me i see that insight of me and i open up the door and as we open up the door and we embrace the very essence of ourselves and the very essence of ourselves is at our root stronger than we realize, more powerful than we had given it credit for. It brings us to the ace of fire. It brings us to this place of passion and determination and focus and, and, and just becoming. And so as we embrace the ace of fire, we embrace the fires of ourselves. We embrace the passionate, you know, determination and insight to what we want and how we're opening up the door. The Ace of Fire comes into play and the Ace of Fire starts to become who we are on the inside. We start to see ourselves becoming more determined, becoming more focused, very focused on our creations, on what we are creating, what we need to create, what we want to create during this time, our reason for getting out of bed in the morning, our passion has to be heard, has to be seen by ourselves, if not by anybody else. And God's source spirit, again, however you see the divine, the universe opens up this door and says, there is more here, accept it. There is more than you know, Re rejoice within it. Which brings us to the two of cups, the two of water. It brings us to this healing, beautiful love. It brings us to a unity of our inner selves, this desire of how we want to move forward and how we want to express ourselves, this coming together of the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine, which are both equally as important to our own development as, as human beings. And we're going to see ourselves falling in love with ourselves, we're going to see ourselves understanding our journey a bit more. And when Spirit says falling in love with ourselves, it's not in that narcissistic way. It's in that sense of the person who is going to be with me from birth to death is me. And that is a powerful, powerful, powerful statement. 
And so I love the aspects of me. I love the power of me. I love the beauty of me. And that brings me forward in a way that is quite extraordinary. And what we see here is a little bit of whimsy, a little bit of fun, a little bit of mischief coming into play in the sparkle, coming back into the eyes. It leads us then to the King of Swords, cutting away doubts and fears. Our hearts and our mind are going to be so intertwined during this time that it's actually going to be quite beautiful. We're looking at our ideas. We're looking at, you know, our strength. The King of Swords does not play around. He is the warrior king. We're going to be a bit of a warrior during this time, especially when it comes to our hearts, to our emotions. We're not going to let our emotions lead us like some people would expect because we are water sign energy. We can easily fall into our emotions and the moon itself is also also a water sign energy during this time. And so we need to stand into and in our power of thought, our power of greater understanding, our power of, of becoming. And it's the becoming of the emotions and the mind coming together. Because if you are all emotions, you we've all known people who are just all emotions all the time, and they're a bit of a mess. And we all know people who are all logic all the time, and they're a bit of a mess. We need to have that balance. We need to have that harmony. And that's what the King of Swords, the warrior king of mind, of thought, of words, of expression at the heart of us is doing, saying, okay, let me see how to soften this. Let me see how to embrace what I truly need to say, what I truly need to see, how I truly need to open up the doors. And it moves us then to the chariot, which is water sign energy, right? Cancer energy. But it is also the sense of us taking our emotions and he has the horses become his, the horses that drive the chariot become the forces that lead us forward. We're going to see that by embracing the power of our mind and the power of our voice and the power of our word, we hone our our emotions in a way that seems remarkable, in a way that guides us forward, in a way that leads our chariot. And we become the God because this is the God of the sea. Manamik, I always forget how to say it, so it's in Welsh, and we're just going to leave it at that. But we're going to, to see that we are, are moving forward in a way that's quite extraordinary. And we're going to be embracing a depth of emotion, a depth of understanding, a depth of, a depth of insight, a depth of ideas that once seemed overwhelming if we thought of it, once seemed scary if we even tried to embrace it. And now it's just going to seem like, this is where I need to stand. This is what I need to be. This is how I need to move forward. And it brings us to the fool. It brings us to a starting of a journey. It brings us to a new beginning. The fool as I always say, as, as you guys know, is the beginning of the hero's journey. Because no hero says, I'm going to go slay a Gorgon, or I'm going to go, you know, rescue a princess in a, a, cower, a tower guarded by a dragon, isn't thought of as an absolute fool. And so here, when we begin something, we begin it with a sense of people will laugh, people will not understand, people will mock, people will, will, will come at me. And that's okay. Because as long as I keep on moving forward, as long as I don't let their negativity become the very essence of how I view myself, I still get to achieve and succeed and move forward towards my dreams and my desires and what I want from my life. And so the fool moves us. The fool moves us to say, this is a path that you need. This is the path that opens to you. This is the path of your heart. And this is the very essence of your soul. And it brings us to this place of five of pentacles, which as we're starting this journey, as we have the wolf by our side, as we are taking that leap of faith, and whenever we take a leap of faith, we fall because we're jumping off the cliff. And whenever you jump off the cliff, you're going to fall, even if it's just that much, you know, even if it's just such a little bit of space, but still the fall, the stumble, the, the broken wings, the, the sense of, oh my gosh, can I keep on doing this? And then we have our trusty five of pentacles coming into play, which says, don't you remember you're supposed to live in poverty? Don't you remember you're not supposed to think too big or act too wise or push too hard or open up the doors because you're meant to be small. And that is such a crock of bull. It just is period. End of discussion. The five of pentacles is our hardships with money or prosperity. Now it can be money. It can be being seen as worthwhile. It can be, you know, being known by other people. This is where we have our fears. And this could be, I grew up, you know, poor, we're supposed to stay poor type of mentality. Generational curses are nothing more than the negativity that was spoken over one person in our generation, who, in our family line that, you know, then spoke it over everybody else. And this is a time where we break the shackles of the poverty 
mentality. This is a time when we open ourselves up to wealth and success. It could be that we have the, the five of pentacle mentality, the poverty mentality from our generational line. It can be that we got it from a, a lover who we just absolutely adored, but had really negative responses to money when it came to our lives. And this is our internalization of it. And this is us saying, I don't need to be out in the cold anymore. I don't need to be not denied prosperity, success, bounty, and abundance. And what's more, I refuse to be denied any of that. I open up the door to success. I've lived out in the cold too long. It leads us to seeing what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, angels. Fantastic. At our root, it's the masculine. The sacred masculine is going to be really important to us. That sense of claiming a power on this earthly realm and this determination and focus and kind of kind of going for the kill type of thing. The hunter is, is going to be as important to us during, during this time of harvest, the building up of the strength of the hunter, as it will be during the hunter's full moon on the 20th of October. And it says the masculine, nothing is yet set in stone. There is still this malleability to the time. There's still this intensity, this change, this focus, this passion that opens up the doors, that leads us forward, that embraces the waters of our beings and the intentions of ourselves. It leads us then to our inner self, which says release. Don't let your past hold you back. And that's, that's just so important for our inner selves to say, this is the love that I'm embracing. This is the passion that's moving me forward. This is the heart that's guiding me. I release all the negativity, all the the putrefaction within my heart, within my soul, the, the, the rotting. I release it all. And I embrace the beauty and the power and the brilliance that is me. I make space for for passion lead, to lead me forward, for power to become a part of me. It then leads us to our emotional self. And it says resistance. Have faith in your dreams. Somebody has tried to crush you down or something or the world in general has tried to crush your dreams and trust yourself and make you think I can't move forward. I can't go after what I want. I can't have the success that I need. And now we're going to see the fact that having faith in your dreams and being able to say there's more to me than meets the eye is going to be intrinsically important to who we are and to moving those waters forward to success, moving our emotions forward into success and aligning it with the power of our mind, the power of our voice, the power of the intention of the word and vibration of being that moves us. We have growth in the public arena and growth leads us to looking at the bigger picture. So we have grown, now we can see the bigger picture more. We can take aim towards what we want, towards where we desire being, towards what's important to us. And that lets us have a clear shot. It lets us have a clear shot of how we want to move as our life evolves, how we want to move as we evolve, as we open up the doors and we open up the gates. Our subconscious Luna message is peace. Your commitments are being tested. Peace, you are going to be tried. You know, things are going to be difficult. You are going to be pushed in ways or tested in ways that you don't like or you don't want. And and that's going to be okay. It's going to be okay to get angry and annoyed and, and frustrated and upset. But what's not going to be okay is to turn the back, your back on yourself. What's not going to be okay is to lose the center of peace, to lose the beauty of peace and fall into darkness. Because it would be very easy, again, with the Mercury squared Pluto, to lose all the blessings of Mercury trying Jupiter and Jupiter sextile Pluto that they bring you and just say, I'm falling down this rabbit hole. I'm going so deep that there's no way out. So just be mindful of that. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy, which is truth. Follow your voice. This is the throat chakra. Follow your voice. Follow what you desire. Speak your truth and understand that some people might not like it, 
But you know what? As long as it's the truth, as long as you're embracing yourself and you're not hurting anybody and you're moving forward in love, that's going to be brilliant. The subconscious emotional self is the king of cups. Now, this is us. We can have a tendency during this time, Scorpio, to get in our own way and also to let our emotions become overpowering. You know, just the only guiding factor. We have to have the king of cups and the king of, of swords come together, both being equally as powerful, both leading us forward in a very real way. We're also going to be very drawn to people who are very emotional, who are very reactionary. So just be mindful of that. It leads us then to our subconscious rooted self, and that's the hermit. This is Virgo energy. This is a sense of there's more truth to us on the inside than we realize. There's more power here than we, we know. And it's turning inwardly. It's opening up the door. It's gaining insights and ideas and passions and, and purpose forward. And it's knowing that it's coming from within. It's coming internally instead of externally. It then brings us to our subconscious inner self. And that is the ace of air. I love that the harp is made of bone. I just think that's really beautiful. That the, the music that we are playing is made from our ancestors, is made from the collective consciousness of those who came before us. And as we weave the song, as we weave our own, you know, voice and beauty into the world, there's a sense of honored tradition of those who came before us. And this is also a gift from God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe of our voice, of our passion, of our power, of our instincts. And I love that the strings are a spider web. You know, they change. They're, they're beautiful. They're fragile. They're strong. Our music is just that beautiful, fragile, strong, and as delicate as a spider's web. It leads us then to our subconscious emotional self. And that's the page of pentacles, learning how to be a student of our prosperity and success, learning how to open up the door to the bounty that we want within our world and within ourselves. This is going to be a time with the earth sign energy that we become a student of our grounding and the earth sign energy is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We become a student of how to ground ourselves to the earth, how to plant the seeds of our prosperity, our success, our intuition, our desires, and open up the door to the future that we want. It then leads us to our subconscious inner self, uh, not inner self, public arena self. And that's the page of pentacles once again. Here it says new experiences. In the public arena, we will be having new experiences. We will be seeing new ideas to nurture and to move forward in and to gain a greater understanding of. Things that we thought were black and white, white we're going to see are just unbelievable shades of gray. And those shades of gray are important because that's what gives the picture dimension. We're doing the shading now. We're adding dimension to our world and to ourselves and to what we desire. And as we do so, we open up the door in a really weird, in a really weird way, yes, but in a really real way to say, I'm calling forward more prosperity in my life than I ever knew possible and that I absolutely deserve. All right. All right, Scorpio. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the beauty of this full moon. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Scorpio, and may you have a blessed moon.